Okay, so today I just wanted to talk a little bit about GD match. Um, I'm gonna focus really on the one too many matches. Um, like previous videos that I've done before. Um, you know, down here, this is all your kits. Um, anything with an A starts or your ancestry. T is family tree DNA. G are generics, meaning that's where your um that's where your kits from genes for kit are gonna come from. G just happens to stand for generic. M is um twenty three and me. And then you have these kits right here that start with a P. And you get the P, and then on the end, well, the middle right here will have the kit number, the A66901. I guess that's how you say it. Anyway, the kit up here matches to Bernard, as you can see. Bernard's my husband. This one right here is phased maternal and phased paternal. Basically, what happened here is because we have his DNA done for his father, but not for his mother. So, what we do is we go here to phasing, and then I put in his kit number, which is right here, and his father's, which is right here, and it spits out kits that match kits that match the paternal. Um, it spits the ones out. They'll be here saying that these matches that will come up in the one too many if I use this kit number are going to be matches to James, which is his father. And the ones that come up here are his maternal. And basically all that really happened here is since I don't have, because his, his mother has actually died, so I don't have her DNA, I know that the ones that don't don't match the paternal, which is James, if they don't match James, then they're going to match, they're going to match maternal, and that's how that works. I could not do face because I don't have the DNA from my mother or my father because they are both deceased, so I did play around, and I actually entered my aunt's information, which is Linda. And I used her just to get a general idea. Now it's not going to be it's not going to be perfect because there may still be some that uh, my father's DNA passed to me that I didn't get or she didn't get from her parents. So it's not exact. But just playing around, it does technically work. But otherwise than that it wouldn't hold it with a grain of salt, I guess. Okay, so I just wanted to talk about that for a second. So we're going to do one too many real quick, and we're going to work on my kit. I understand that it shows kit numbers here, and it does show names and all that, and that's why a lot of people use use um uh you can actually use a nickname versus your real name, which is fine. But, um, because GD Match is actually public, you can go through and look at these kit numbers and whatnot. And as long as you have your record public, it doesn't really matter because these kit numbers, um, what are they are, like, you can go and put in uh, your own mix of a kit number. Like, if you were just wanting to play around, then you can put in a whatever number and see if you come up with a kit. And they're all going to come back unless they're private and then you can't use the one too many. Um, like this, you can do one to one, but you can't do one to many. And you're going to get their email address anyways. Um, so going over the one too many. I didn't, a lot of you, like I said, started watching these videos because of uh, postings on Facebook about Jeans for Good. 
With Jeans for Good, you are not going to get your haplogroup. I think I've discussed that before, your haplogroup, unless you're doing deep ancestry where you're wanting to know, you know, like really know where your mitochondrial came from or your Y DNA if you're a male. If you want to know that, then that then you're gonna want a haplogroup, but you don't you don't need it. Most of the things that people have told me as to why they they want a DNA test anyways, they're not gonna need their haplogroup. So it doesn't it doesn't really matter. Um the first test on the on here is my son's test. And um, you know, it does have haplogroup, but like I already said, you know, M shows that it came from twenty three and me. And it's a V tor uh, a V four chip, meaning it's a newer test. Um, twenty three and me actually spit out and said that he for mitochondrial DNA, which is his mother's 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 line, so his his empty DNA or mitochondrial DNA is HV nine A and that means because I'm his mother, I am HV nine A. Now with the Y chromosome, obviously you only get a Y chromosome if you're a male. So this will be he will have a Y chromosome because that is the same as his father's. That's the same as his father's and his father's and his father's. So I'm not even gonna say all those letters and numbers, but that's his, his, uh, Y half little group. Now, obviously this one right here being my daughter, she's going to have the same half little group because I'm her mother. She's not going to have Y half little group because she's a female. Um, when you start looking into autosomal, and that's the type of test that you want to take. If you're just doing, like, basic, closer information, past couple hundred of years and whatnot, then autosomal is the test that you want to do. Now, if you do Ancestry.com or the Family Finder at uh, FamilyTreeDNA.com, you're going to get the autosome te test. Now, there are other options. You could get the Y, um, the y test on F FTDNA or Family Tree DNA. Or you could get MTD DNA. You could definitely pay for those, but like I said, once before, unless you're looking for like actual deep, where did you come from DNA? You're not looking for DNA cousins or anything. Maybe trying to to, to just generally know more about where those lines come. Your mother's only your mother's line, or only your father's line up only that male or female but you lose all the people in the middle and that's where autosoma comes in um so this chart you have the total cinnamorgans your largest cinnamorgan that's what the cm stand for is cinnamorgan the gen is for generation and then you have the x Y, um, X DNA. Not to be confused, and some people get very confused about MT DNA because it's something to do with up your mother's line. A lot of people think, well, X, you know, because X is female, that, well, the X DNA means up your mother's line. And that's not true. Now, I'm not going to sit here and get in, into depth as to how you determine what person or what people in your tree you can actually get the X chromosome from. But you can, the only one that, in short, short answer here, the only person that you can definitely, without a doubt, know that if you ha if you share X chromosome, if you share an X chromosome with somebody, then you know without a doubt you will not get that from your father's 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 whatever. That's the only thing that you can exclude is that is your father's father's line, not your father's mother's line, because you still get your X chromosome from your father's mother's line. So, um, I will get an X chromosome from, or bits and pieces of an X chromosome from my 
paternal grandmother, but my, not my paternal grandfather. And that's just generally how that works. Um, but that's what this is showing right here is, um, is largest segment of, uh, is organs is 196.1 for the X chromosome. Um, and then you keep on, you going down a little, um, I'm just going to skip the second one because that's my daughter. Uh, this one right here is my aunt. So I only got 55.9 Cinemorgan shared with my aunt. So if we go over here and look, we're back over there in the autosome, uh, autosomal. I share a heart. Or I share 1,429.9 Cinemorgans, with my largest Cinemorgan block being 36.5. Now, when you're looking at that, that's a pretty close. Um, it says that generation would be one generation different. Well, I know she's my aunt. She's my fa my father's sister. There's a one generation block difference there. Now, if you want to go down another, well, this is my ideal is based on being 237.4 Cinemorgans total. GDMash says that, generally speaking, that she would be my third cousin. Okay, so my third cousin. Well, I know that my great-grandparents, let's look up a chart here, cousin chart, okay, so hopefully you can see this, if it says that, that we are third cousins, that means that we share In order to get third cousin, it means that we share second great grandparents. Second great grandparents. Okay, so second great grandparents. Okay, I'm sorry about that. In order to protect some people's information, I had to pause the page so that I can, um, so I can go back. Um, Okay, so total Cinemorgan shared with her is 237.4. So I know I know how we match. And the reason why I could show you my tree is because everybody here is deceased, otherwise than me, obviously. So you know, everybody well I know that We have to share, in order to be third cousin, we have to share second great-grandparents. Well, second great-grandparents, if this is our grand, this would be our great, and this would be our great-great. And this is where you're going to come into an issue about how much you actually share with somebody. So I share in the range to be a third cousin but I know that we are actually second cousins now if I go over here and I look and this is just a chart to get it tells you um, for Cinemorgans it tells you it gives you an idea of well if you have however many Cinemorgan what the possibility of your outcome for relation is so if we go back it shows that we are 237 Cinemorgan or 237.4 Cinemorgans so we would, I'd be between here. I know that most likely we would either be double second cousins, in which I know we are not, or we could be second cousins, or first cousin twice removed, half first cousin once removed, half great great and an uncle, because we are in between here. We're like, just right in between here. A little bit closer to quite a bit closer to, to, um, fifth degree. 
Well, I do know that that's correct. One of the reasons why it's staying so low is it could be um, just the largest segment or for whatever reason um, it's saying that we we're not a, we're not predicted second cousins versus pre I mean predicted third cousins. And that's one of the issues that you have because I know that we share. We share a set of great grandparents. William Dunyon here and Margaret Wainscott is this, is our shared ancestor. And th the reason why I know that is because Dolores is my grandmother, and then Dolores's brother Bobby is her grandfather, and that's how we share the we share. Uh, great grandparents. So that's these are some things that you really need need to look at. Is number one, it's just going to be predicted. So it doesn't mean a hundred percent. It it just means predicted generation. Um. So that's just what you really need to look at when you're thinking about it. Because you're going to get a lot in this just to give you an idea. It just has me at 2,000 matches. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more after those 2,000 matches. But I have 2,000 matches. And any of these kits that you see right here that pop up that are bright green like this, like this one right here, I don't know if you can tell. Um, this one looks a little bit darker than this. It means that the person from 23andMe that matches moved over to gdmatch.com recently. And then, um, like this green right here is not as bright as this green. That means that this one... I uh, moved over before this one did. That's that's why this one's a brighter green. So yeah, that that's the whole issue there. Um I'll actually actually start comparing some of these closer and give you an ideal there. But that's just generally you know, haplogroups, mitochondrial DNA, it's mtDNA, Y chromosome DNA, total cinnamorgans, largest cinnamorgan, generation difference, um, details about your X chromosome, total cinnamorgans and X, and largest cinnamorgans and X, name and email address.